what do you guys know about Jimbo? J.G. Thurwell and his insane body of work. J.G. Thurwell also goes by many names, such as Clint Ruin, Frank Blunt, and of course, all his fetus iterations. J.G. Thurwell is an artist based out of New York, even though he's originally from Melbourne. This man has so much body of work, including his main project, Fetus. And of course, all the different names for it, scraping fetus off the wheel, fetus off the glass, you've got fetus on your breath. Um, he also has tons of other projects like Wise Blood, Manorexia, Steroid Maximus. And of course, he does a lot of soundtracks, including The Venture Brothers, Archer. He did a soundtrack for a horror movie called The Blue Eyes. Um, he's worked with many, many artists, including Mark Almond, Nick Cave, Lydia Lunch, Joseph Loon, Trent Reznor, Coyle, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Um, you name it, this man has done it. Extremely prolific, extremely influential, extremely underrated still somehow. Today we're going to talk about all the insane amount of stuff he's worked on. I got it. All of this. Um, originally, I was just gonna make a video kind of um, rating all the main Fetus albums, but now I'm basically just reviewing everything I have here. Well, I shouldn't say reviewing. I'm gonna give a very arbitrary score to each album and maybe suggest some um, tunes off of them that you should check out. But either way, you should check out this man. J.D. Thurwell is a musician, a composer, a writer, um, an industrial superstar, even though he would hate to be called that, a no-wave um, superstar, a rock star, um, orchestral stuff, um, occasional porn star, and oral sex connoisseur. Yes, that would be J.D. Thurwell. Um, a man so talented, a man so skinny, he probably only sustains himself on listening to soundtracks and performing oral sex on various females. But this man is wild, he's crazy, and he's crazy talented. Um, I feel like his career expands a lot of genres, um, a lot of sounds. Some people would call him like a noise rocker, a lot of people call him an industrial um, artists, you know, and even though he does appear, you know, in books like this, I think it's not very fair to say that necessarily. Um, I think a lot of his early stuff and a lot of his stuff in general is like a really perfect blend of like no wave and kind of industrial. Um, you can definitely hear a lot of the New York influence on him, especially his later stuff. You can hear a lot of the soundtrack and jazz influence and it's all really really fantastic um but yeah none of these are none of these cds are in any particular order um i'm just gonna be pulling them out and showing you my thoughts and opinions on them that's about it so <laughs> um, we'll see how that goes right now we're listening to some naked city because you know as much as I, was, I would love to have Thurwell's big band hammer on me, um, I'd like you guys to enjoy this video about it getting flagged. He's, he's a little grumpy when he used some of his stuff. I did want to kind of edit like some interviews or clips in and have some tracks or just like clips that I'd love to show you guys his music, but just buy it for yourself. Everything's on his website. Check it out. Um, I don't want to be grumpy with me already. <laughs> But yeah, um, without further ado, I guess let's start with this stack. I got two big stacks, and then let's talk about it. Um, and yes, he is the guy who does the music for the Venture Brothers and Archer. Like I said, he's the real deal. Okay, first album we got is Fetus's Flow. Let's see. Um... This came out in 2001, and a lot of people really, really love this album. This album is probably one of his most diverse albums. It has, like, every track sounds a lot different than the other. It's pretty insane. Um, Quick Fix is definitely, like, 
kind of a noise rock album. And then you got the quiet, calm, um, cirrhosis of the heart, but it's, you know, it's pretty, it's good. It's definitely like something you would find in a thriller. Um, I love, you know, of course, The Need Machine. I really love the track Grace of God. And Someone Who Cares is probably one of the uh, best tracks. And you'll end up noticing a theme for all this color scheme as well. Uh, for me, this one's about a 7.5 out of 10. So, yes. Hope you enjoy all these arbitrary <laughs> scores out of 10. I couldn't think of anything better. And also, disclaimer, just so you know, um, my opinion is fact. And these are all the only objective ratings of these albums. So if you have one, you are wrong. I'm correct. So there's that. <laughs> okay, this one is Fetus Corruptus. This is Rife. Um, let's see, Rife is a live album of Thaw. This came out in 1988. Um, this one's pretty good. This, um, I really like the ver version of English Faggot on here. It's super long and drawn out. There's like a lot of pig noises in it. Um, Hey Filler is good. He ends the track on a really excellent track called Clothes Hoist. And it's kind of like weird to hear it live. Um, unfortunately the flow of this album isn't like super super amazing so it's definitely not one I would I put on like all the time but it's definitely one of the better live albums I give this one like a 6.5 out of 10 <laughs> all right oh we got a good one here's his very first full-length album this is depth but you've got fetus on your breath <laughs> Here's the back. Um, I think he had released two EPs or one EP before he released his very first full length album. And this is his very first one. This came out in 81 and it doesn't sound like it. Um, I know people like throw the term ahead of their time around like all the time, but Thoreau really was ahead of his time, um, especially in his writing. He's an excellent writer and he was kind of doing the whole like joking about, you know, death and suicidal nihilism, like jokingly, you know, shit posty about it before it became a meme, before it became cool that all the kids do now is joking about how they wish they were dead and all that stuff. Nah. He was the first to joke around about stuff and make it cool. He's a cool guy. He, you know, he has the naturally huge hair. He has the sunglasses. He rocks the mullet. He wore the leather jeans. He influenced a lot of the uh, style that you know, a lot of other people during that scene are industrial swear now. He's a cool guy, not those kids. But anyway, Def, and you'll th I think you'll notice a theme too with the tra um, the names of the albums as well. Um, this is a really great debut. He starts off really strong. This is pure, jazzy, no wave, like in its purest form. Of course, the first track is New York A Bus. Um, it's got the classic song, Today I Started Slogging Again. What we've been doing is great. I think my favorite track is I'm Surrounded by Incompetence. I would check that one out for this album. That's a really, really good track. And this one definitely flows together. Very excellent. Um, 8 out of 10. Death. <laughs> I don't think there's anything. I might, might show you some of this in their CDs too, some of these, because sometimes they're cool. Some of them are like weirdly textured too. I don't know. He's a madman. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, let's see. This one's probably one of my least favorites. Right after is You Got Fetus on Your Breaths, Ache. Um, it's very jazzy and funky. Like, when I re rate these albums low, it's still a, like a JG Thurwell project, so it's still good compared to a lot of stuff. It's just not like in his realm of being the best, you know what I mean? But yeah, this is Ake. Um, this one came out 82, maybe? I can't remember when this one came out. It came after, it came out after death. That's all you need to know. Um, yeah, it's just funky, no way. I'm trying to think of a good track to check out here. Um, Mark of the Ostracizer is a pretty good track off of here. But like I said, unfortunately, I don't really like the flow of this. And some of the tracks sound a little bit the same. This is probably a 4 out of 10. However, we're going back to strong because in 1984, using the first time moniker, Scraping Fetus Off the Wheel, we have 
I mean, I won't lie, it's early on, but this is my favorite fetus album. This chorus is Scraping Fetus Off the Wheels Hole, 1984. And this is the cover of the cassette tape. Look at that cover. Got that on the shirt. Um, a shirt you can actually get right on a site now. It's really comfy, too. Hell yes. So, this is a 10 out of 10 album, by the way. Just so you know. Every single song is so addictive. Um, everything's such an earworm on this track. Like, I can listen to this over and over again, not get bored. Um, it's just, there's so many good tracks. Every track is good. It opens up with a crazy song, Close Close Hoist. Um, and that's, I mean, you listen to that track, and that's all you really need to know about his work in this album. There's not one bad song here. They get stuck in my head all the time. Um, Satan's Place, track seven, probably gets stuck in my head the most. Straight of Shame, Hot Knuckles, um, Hot Horse is great. Lust for Death is great. Um, God. He wrote a song about Nick Cave, too, called Sick Man on this album. Uh, I can't suggest it highly enough. Um, even if you don't like a lot of crazy genres or just maybe rock in general, or if you enjoy some of the quirkier stuff like, I don't know, Mr. Bungle, Faith No More, things like that, that nature, you need, need to listen to this album. It is definitely a masterpiece, and I use that term lightly. Like, very, very liberally, I mean, not liberally, very, very um, conservative. I barely use that term, masterpiece, but this is a masterpiece. Yeah, I guess Lust for Death. Listen to Lust for Death and you'll understand this whole album, or Satan's Place. It's my suggestion. 10 out of 10. And then, um, we'll st we're still starting strong after something that's probably everyone else's 10 out of 10. Um... This is Scrappy Fetus Off the Wheels. Nail. You can see it right here. This is probably his most famous album. This is probably the album a lot of people have got into him through. Um, it's absolutely amazing. This is also definitely a 10 out of 10. Um, it's so cool. This is actually not the album. We have the albums in the car right now. It also has an awesome gun on it. It's very, very cool. Aesthetic. Um, what makes this album so good? This is just again the perfect blend of no wave, industrial, excellent writing, um, orchestral themes. His, his orchestral side really comes out here. The composition is insane. Um, even with the opening track, it's oh man, it just shines through so good. I want you to appreciate this lyric sheet too. Um, it's a little bit incoherent <laughs> it's just rambling on but you get say what you mean and say it mean yeah that sounds about right oh uh, man i think anybody could really enjoy this album it's really excellent i guess i could suggest um descent into the inferno i feel like is a popular track that a lot of people have got into him through i would definitely suggest that um you know pig's will is great every track off this album is great um nail is just so good i would definitely say between these two albums if you want to get into him in general you can't go wrong with these you gotta gotta listen to these um even if you just like music in general and i'm interested in checking him out like these are albums you gotta hear before you die you hear me okay these are 10 out of 10s all right, my opinion is the truth. Are you gonna, you gotta, you have to objectively listen to those albums. How about that? <laughs> Not if I said it, but that was eighty-five. Um, it, like I said, it's it's so insane how talented he was, so ahead of his time. Um, I feel like two words in music that get thrown around a lot too are quirky and genius. Um, he, JG Thurwell is definitely a genius. Um, that's definitely something to take very seriously. He definitely is. His music is definitely quirky in the very actual term of the word. People throw that word around so much, but his music is definitely just genius and quirky, I guess is the best way to put it. But yeah, let's keep going because we got a lot to get through. All right. This is 
Mark Almond and Fetus. I think this is a project called Flesh Volcano, I believe. With Slut, uh, 1987. Here's the back. Got this creature eating woman, I believe. It's the inside, very cool art. Um, unfortunately, I. I, but I love Mark Almond. I love J.D. Thurwell. I wasn't a big fan of this album. Um, but again, this is probably like a 4 out of 10 for me. The mixing's a little weird, too. It's kind of loud and obnoxious. Mark Almond doing fetus tracks. It's not bad, but it's not that great either. Yeah, 4 out of 10. All right. Ooh. We got another really great one. Let's see. 1995... He came out with this fabulous album, Gash. And fabulous it is. Yes, this is Fetus Gash. Um, I don't know what the Fetus moniker for this album was. I think he just started sticking to calling it Fetus at this point. But yeah, this is Gash. Um, this is excellent. So many great tunes. Opening track Mortgage is great. I really love Mighty Whitey. Friend or Foe is funky. Um... This is definitely a noise rock album. A very, at times, like, jazzy and funky noise rock album. You know, it's so good. Uh, Verklempt is a fantastic track. And Ver Verklempt is probably one of the best music videos he has. He doesn't really have the best music videos because um, he's really cool. And he'll license a lot of, like, underground artists or um, just all kinds of indie artists to, like, make his own music videos. And... Unfortunately, they can be a little hit or miss. Uh, I do appreciate him, you know, helping other artists out. That's like his whole spiel in life. But for Klemp, is a very simple um, track. I mean, not track. A very simple music video. It works really good. It's such a great track. Um, take it outside, God Boy. Hammer Falls is a really, really heavy noise track. It's good. I like Friend or Foe. It's funky. Hmm. I guess I would suggest Mighty Whitey and for Klemp's. Um, for this album to check out. I mean, Hammer Falls, too. But yeah, this is like an 8.5 out of 10. This is such a good listen to. This is a good driving album, too. Fetus Gash. All right, now we're getting into... Uh, let's see. Uh, I can't remember which year this came out. This is Steroid Maximus. Um, Ectopia. Let's see. Yeah. Check the inside of that album out. Very, very cool. Sorry about that. A minor interruption. Um, I did remember this came out. This came out in 2002. And Sir Red Maximus is a really, really good side project of Fetus or J.D. Thurwell. This is definitely his whole... Very jazzy, um, fake theme song going on. I feel like all his albums are supposed to be, um, like, soundtracks. I said theme song. <laughs> I'm at soundtracks to, um, movies that don't exist. And like, that's kind of how I feel about all his music in general. It's definitely it reminds me of, like, a soundtrack. But this stuff is great. This is all very, um, uh, you know, very jazzy, very big bands, very well composed. Really great stuff. Good vibe. This stuff you could put on and nobody would know that um, the person who made this used to be an outlandish, no-wave industrial artist running around the floor and growling. Um, you would never know because this stuff is really good and well-composed jazz music. Um, yeah, this album itself, this is not my absolute favorite Steroid Maximus, but it's really good. This is definitely a groovy one. Um, I'd say this is a 7 out of 10 and... It's a good track to listen to. Uh, I mean, all they kind of all just go together. Let's see. I'm trying to remember. It's been a while since I listened to this one. I'm trying to remember the tracks on here. But I like, check out the aesthetic for that insert. It's very, very cool. Let's see. Uh, Not, Not is a really, really good track. And Bad Day and Greenpoint, those are definitely ones that stand out. So Bad Day and Greenpoint and Not 
would be good track to check out for this. 7 out of 10, Steroid Maximus, Ectopia. All right. Another one in my top five. Insanely excellent album. So good. Another one I get songs stuck in my head all the time. This is the 2005 uh, Fetus is Love. I, love. I always thought this album came out in 2004. I looked it up on his site. He said 2005. So, whatever. Yes. Fetus Love. One thing I never understood is his use of... Um, katakana on his albums i don't know i think he just likes the aesthetic he's he does all the artwork for everything and all his albums himself and all that it's really cool but i think he just likes how it looks Uetasu. <laughs> but yeah this album is something else the opener um not adam gets in my head all the time this is definitely, I think, his most realized, like, orchestral fetus album, where he definitely, he isn't making industrial here, he isn't making noise rock, um, he's definitely a little bit no wave influence. This is all, like, just his own style, his thing, um, and it's really just all him. It's so good. Big sounds, bigger orchestra sounds, powerful moment. This album just sounds huge, and it's really good. Um, yeah, I could definitely suggest the first track, Not Adam. Um, second track is great, Magane Dua. I think that's how you say it. Aladdin Reverse is a huge song. Like, it just sounds so intense and epic. <laughs> I hate using that word, but that describes this album well. Um, the track Miracle gets in my head all the time, too. Um, if you want to listen to one track off this album, probably Miracle or not Adam, and you get the gist of how good this is and the sound he's going for. Um, yeah, this is definitely a 9 out of 10 for me. Peace is love. Check it out. Okay. Um, this is... Fetus Dance. This came out in 2006, so this is literally the next album. Yeah, look at that cover. Um, this one's definitely not as good as Love, but this one definitely has a lot of good tracks. Uh, the opener, like I Hate All of You, is insanely good. Um, and I guess he, he posted a video not so long ago, at the beginning of the year, of him doing like a new rendition of that track, and it was really good. Um, because despite being almost in his 60s now, he's still very active, still making soundtracks, still going on tour, still making music. I mean, this man won't stop. And I guess now he's doing, um, all new compositions of older tunes and playing it with, um, a live orchestra and bands. And I really like the result. And he said in interviews that he likes it and feels it does the material justice. And I agree. And he played the I Hate All of You like that live with the orchestral band it was really good um it's one of my favorite fetus songs of all time though is off um this album it's not in your hands um but but it also is one of my kind of least favorite tracks i don't like the mix of blessed evening on here it's really bad sounding it's kind of corny it's not that great cold shoulder is good into the light is good um Mine is no disgrace. I think featuring the Melvins is really good on here. But yeah, it's like a textured inner sleeve. Very cool. His packaging is always his packaging is always good. I'm not. I mean, I'm not really doing him justice with this video. This is a very unprofessional video. But it's the first of September, so we gotta get the the word out for his music. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is fetuses damp. Um, like a 7 out of 10, I'd say. There's some good tracks in here. Not In Your Hands. Listen to that track. Listen to, um, I Hate All of You and It's Not In Your Hands. Really good. Okay, this is 19... 1990? Yeah, this is 1990. This is Fetuses. This is like a single EP. Butterfly Potion. Yeah. Very cool. Um... This is one of his most lo-fi releases. This stuff usually is like pretty um, quality sounding for the time. Not that I care. I love lo-fi stuff. And lo-fi fetus is very good. 
You know, it has a title track, Butterfly Potion, it only has three tracks, Your Salvation, and Free James Brown, so he can run me down. Um, yeah, it's just kind of like really good noise rocky lo-fi, um, you know, JG, jamming out. I definitely can't suggest it enough. Um, you know, this itself is definitely like, even though it's a small little EP album, this is like an 8 out of 10. Definitely check it out. It's on vinyl too, which is cool. Uh, but check out this track, Butterfly Potion. Really good. Okay. Uh, this is Wise Blood. This is um, this is a side project from him that I feel like no one talks about, and it's really good. This is Wise Blood's Dirt Dish. This came out in '95. Um, yeah. I don't even know how to describe this music. Like it's all fetus. It's all Jimbo, but it's definitely like. Maybe a little bit metally, no wave. Um, I don't know. It's just kind of his own thing, and it's really good. And I feel like when you hear this, and then you listen to a lot of artists he helped out, especially stuff like White Zombie, you can definitely hear the influence of Wise Blood in that music. Um, yeah, this is good. Of course, it has his probably most famous Wise Blood track, which is "Someone Drowned in My Pool." Just good. The whole album flows really well. Um, Fudge Punch, Motor Slug, and of course, Death Rave 2000. Um, if you get that single and you put it on the record, it just kind of loops over and over again. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> you know, you could prank call someone and just put it up to the record and have that loop for 20,000 years. You could do that. <laughs> um, it's, it's like a 7.5 out of 10. I don't listen to it like as much as I listen to fetus stuff, but it is good and I do crave it sometimes. Maybe it's closer to an eight. It's good. That's what you need to know. Check out the track of Someone Drowned in My Pool or Motor Slug. Ice Blood is good. Alright, this is um Fetus's Mail. I wanna say this is like one of his most famous live albums. Uh this is ninety-two and it's pretty good. It's got a lot of tracks on it. Um, this is probably this is my this is like my second favorite live album. Um, it's got the Free James Brown track, Death Rape, Anything Viva, which I really like the rendition of Anything Viva on this one. This one has Butterfly Potion, I'll Meet You in Poland, um, Baby, which is a really good version of it. I don't know. It's just more fetus material, just lot put in the live and he's really good live he's crazy live and he brings a lot to the table to his tracks live he'll do like different stuff to tweak it up he'll add extra stuff you know he'll destroy pig heads while you're listening <laughs> um yeah it's like a 7.5 out of 10 yeah okay here is 2010 fetuses hide yeah yeah he's still making music um, this isn't his latest release either. Uh, I don't know. I won't lie. I don't really like this one super well. I mean, there's definitely some good tracks on it. And you definitely get that aesthetic down. Very nice. Um, but I don't know. I just don't find myself at all, like, reaching for this one or listening to this one. But... There's definitely some good tracks on there. I mean, you know, the opener Cosmetics is pretty wild. But, I don't know. I feel like this one just, like, he definitely tried something different and unique. He tried to do, like, his crazy, like, avant-garde, psychedelic, orchestral stuff. Like, it's not bad in itself or sound good. I just, I don't know. Maybe it's not for me. Um, maybe I can't appreciate this album enough. But it definitely sounds great. Like, he definitely tries hard to make it sound big. And there's a lot going on. But I guess if you like really interesting, kind of psychedelic, orchestral stuff, I haven't heard this one, check it out. But this one's not really that much for me. Um, like a 6 out of 10. Okay. Second. Pile is getting lower. This is another live album. This is Fetus is Boil. Um, this is probably his most lo-fi live album. Like, it, the quality is not 
Zachary, I don't know if it's recording or just the music, but it's really heavy though. This is a heavy uh, noise rock album, definitely. And it comes out with the track Take It Outside, God Boy, and fucking Clothes Hoist for Clumps. I'll meet you in Poland. He does a version of I Am the Walrus on here, which is actually really intense and good. Um, he definitely plays around with a lot of his tracks here. He definitely brings takes unique spins on them live. Like I said, very lo-fi. It is good. Um, I'd say this is like close to a 7 out of 10. Um, if you want to hear just crazy very noisy lo-fi fetus tracks or versions of fetus tracks, I would say check out Boyle. Um, it was also put out Cleopatra, <laughs> which is, I find very interesting. Um, a lot of his stuff is on his own label, which is Self-Immolation, or now it's Coptic Ants, is that right? I don't know. I don't know anything. Cleopatra also put out this Industrial Revolution book that I was showing earlier. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, Cleopatra, the infamous label for all the young gothies, which I'm not, by the way. All right, this is Fetus's Vein. This came out in 2007. Um, this is a remix album with a bunch of stuff from that time period. The, um, there's just a lot of really good stuff. I like the Aladdin Reverse soundtrack here and the How to Vibrate remix. Is really good too. Also, there's a Matmos remix of Not in Your Hands, which I love that song and I fucking love Matmos and it turned out really well. The flow is a little weird this album. Like, I like a lot of the individual tracks, but put together, it's, I don't know, kind of, it doesn't ruin the album, but it doesn't make it like super great. But like, all the individual tracks in here is really good. I would definitely check out the, uh, the Aladdin Reverse and How to Vibrate remix on here. This is like a 7 out of 10. I mean, it's got, the tracks themselves are really good. Put together, mm, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Okay, this is Fetus's Null and Void. This is actually two EPs put together, um, Null and Void. And I can't remember exact year. Um, came out in the 90s. Oh, I was listening to this the other night, so it's in my CD player actually. <laughs> you can see all his artwork. That's what the um, uh, null looks like. Yes, here's the back. Um, so null is probably just like a six out of ten. Um, it's worth it to hear all the Verklempt remixes because it's such a great track and they all do it justice really well. But Void um, has, uh, you know, the Friend or Foe track from Gash, which is really good. Insecticide is insanely good. And I like all, I like the other Friend or Foe remix on here. It's really stripped down. It's, I don't know, it does it, it, does it justice. It's cool. Flux is good. Um, yeah. So Void is definitely an EP checking out. That one's definitely like a 7.5 out of 10, 8. Um, yeah, check out the song, Insecticide, uh, the Friend or Foe Unhugged Mix. <laughs> or just, you know, check out this EP together. Really good. This is Null and Void. You can get them individually, but you might as well just get that. Check it out, right? <laughs> Okay, at the end of this pile, we have Fetus's Blow. Yes, so this is another remix album. This is my favorite Fetus remix album. Uh, this just remixes all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, stuff, a lot of stuff from uh, Flow. Obviously, it's called Blow. Yeah. It starts off really good with Sources of the Heart remix by Amon Tobin. Um, I think my favorite is definitely the Need Machine mix by Franz Trekler. It's just like, so the Need Machine is a really hectic, crazy, like, song, and then, um, that song is really stripped down and almost kind of, like, industrial, and it's quiet, and it's almost soothing, but it definitely sounds diabolical. Um, it's just really good. 
I would definitely check that one out. Uh, the Suspect Remix. The Quick Fix by Charlie Clouster is pretty nutsoid. Um, I like this one. This is an 8 out of 10 for Fetus, like, satellite remix album. Yep, this is Blow. Very good stuff. I don't even know how long this video's been. I can't tell, but I'm sure it's been long. And we still got quite a bit. Alrighty. Hold on. I'm gonna stretch. Alright. So. Yeah, no spoilers. Let's check this out. What do we got? Alright. We got the Fetus Symphony Orchestra featuring Liddy Lunch with York. Um, this came out in 97. Um, I think my favorite thing about this album is that in the liner notes, um, because Thurwell does pretty much like all the interpretations on his album and everything, but he's credited as using the conch shell on this album, which is funny. Uh, unfortunately, this album is... I don't like it. Um, it's supposed to... It talks about... Like, it's kind of a concept album about his times... Li he lives in a very harsh part of New York, and of course, early on, too, being part of the no way of seeing, you know, he went through all the hardships of, you know, living in New York. It was really hard. And it's still very, very challenging for many unfortunate people, poor people. It's very rough to live around the area he does. So him and Lydia wanted to take a concept album, just doing some spoken word pieces, some crazy avant-garde music, just talking about how shitty it can be. Um, I like the idea. The execution kind of sucks. Um... Their voices aren't mixed well. His voice doesn't even sound that good on here. Hers is pretty wild. And I do like Lydia Lunch, but her spoken word here is just not that great. It's kind of boring. Instruments aren't really exciting. It's not really fun. Um, yeah, it's like a 3.5, 4 out of 10. Yeah. This one, this is even a gym. This is a Merzbow on my pile. Sorry. Uh, this is Tarot Machine, Merzbow. That's a really good one. Really heavy, harsh noise. <laughs> um, this is a soundtrack he did for a Spanish horror movie, a thriller, called The Blue Eyes. This came out in 2013. I think that's like the cover of the movie or something. I have not seen this movie, and it seems kind of hard to track down. Um, but I have heard this. Um, it's pretty good. I think the problem with it is it sounds a little bit like a standard, like, thriller. Like, kind of standard horror movies. Like, you would expect in a horror movie. Uh, there are some songs that stand out that are really good. Like, The Temple, Courtyard Dogs, uh, Long Bus. Courtyard Dogs is really good. It flows really well. Like, it's not bad or anything. It's good. I definitely can put this on in the background because I like to put on soundtracks in horror movie ones. But... It's definitely a little uninspired, which I feel bad. I mean, I'm sure if he watches this, he's going to be like, no, you're uninspired. And I'll be like, okay. <laughs> I get 6.5 out of 10. All right. Here is another Steroid Maximus album. This one's from 91. Um, this is really good. This is another like pure, funky jazzy, no wave inspired, just music, just really good. Um, I really, really love the track Fight Just. Um, the title track, Colombo, that's the name of this album, Sarah Maximus Colombo, is insanely good. Um, Big Helda meets Little Napoleon. Um, yeah, every track on here is insanely good. And Raymond Watts a Pig also works on him. With this track. I think he works on a little bit of Steroid Maximus stuff. So if you like Pig and Raymond Watts, you should definitely be checking this out. Again, stuff you can put on for pretty much anyone in the background. Um, really good. There's not too much I can say of it. It's just good, jazzy stuff. Fun stuff. Uh, it's like a 7.5 out of 10. Really good flow. Alrighty. Uh, let's see, what do we got over here? Yeah. All right. This is now. This is a project for with, um, JG and Lydia that is really good. This is Clinton Ruin and Lydia Lunches. Don't fear the Reaper. 
single EP thing. Um, they cover Don't Fear the Reaper, and it's good. And they work together, and it's good. Their vocals are good, really well executed. Um, Clinch is good. Uh, I really like the Why Don't We Do It in the Road. I like the way Lydia sounds on that track. It's fun. This is fun. Don't take yourself seriously. Energetic. Um, they sound really good together. Yeah, this is like a 7 out of 10. Definitely check it out. Especially if you like the track, Don't Fear the Reaper. This. Sorry about that. My phone decided that it didn't want to record anymore. <laughs> but I'm almost done. I'm almost done, everyone. I promise. I need to do this. I need to show you. I need to give arbitrary ratings to every CD I got by him. <laughs> what was that? Oh, yeah. The Not Adam single EP thing. Um, really good. Mostly because I really, really love the track um, Not Adam. Um, and I think this is the first time one of my other favorite tracks, Not In Your Hands, ever appeared was on this. This came out in, like, 2004... Or five. I'm not sure with that. I don't, for some reason, like the love era, I just don't remember the dates exactly correct. Um, yeah, this is like a nine out of ten single. Like, there's only like four, five tracks on here. They all just sound really good, and all the Adam mix, not Adam mixes, are really good. Of course, I love "Not in Your Hands." I don't know. I would definitely suggest this, the "Not Adam" single. Check it out. Even if you just kind of want to check out like the modern. Oop. <laughs> 2000 sounding um fetus just check out that's the single really good yeah nine out of ten all right infamous cover infamous album this is clint ruin and lydia lunch's stink fist um as you can see he is kind of balls deep in lydia lunch but he looks a little dejected so who knows he probably wishes he was at home right now listening to alex vega but yeah, um, yeah, we got four tracks in the CD version. It's because I think the original um, like EP or collab is only three tracks, and then this one has the crumb on it with Thurston Moore. Um, this came out in 1987, and it's just it. This is good. This is kind of just like fun noise rock, new wave, kind of industrial um, stuff. Just really good. Um, it kind of reminds me a lot of like, this definitely makes me think of Richard Kern. Like this sounds like something with her spoken word that would come out of the film Right Side of My Brain, which I talked about Richard Kern and showed stuff in another video that I made. Uh, I talked about that movie, which actually has clips of J.D. Thurwell, you know, and he is acting in self-pleasure in that video. <laughs> um, also in that movie, Right Side of Brain, which is really good. He has a cameo. Um, it's a bit of a pornographic film, though. So if you want to see that or not, I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, I don't know. I kind of There's some good lines in here, too, from Lydia. Like, if you didn't talk shit, you'd say nothing. And um, fuck the world. I just want to get off. I don't know. She has this really blunt... Kind of edgy spoken word, but it's really good. She's very good at what she does. If you like that kind of just crazy spoken word stuff, but yeah, this is definitely like a seven out of ten. This one's fun. This one's essential. I think this is fun. All right, fetus in the Chrome Cranks, Vice City, Vice Squad, Dick. I don't know why I said Vice City. <laughs> um, when did this come out? Ninety four. Ninety four. Um, Vice Squad Dick is a really great track. I'm kind of iffy on the Chrome Crank stuff. It's not bad. Um, it does flow together good. This isn't like my favorite thing ever, but Vice Squad Dick is really good. Outside of Time is good. I do kind of like their version of Vice Squad Dick too, the last track. Uh, yeah, like a 6.5, 7 out of 10. Not like that essential, but definitely check it out. Alright, now we're getting to some other side projects. Like I said, this video is going to be me reviewing just fetus albums, but it turned into the stack of CDs. Um, this is Manorexia. Volvix Turbo. Oh, man. Manorexia is, like, the more 
very experimental side projects of JD Thoreau, the very electronic side. Um, this came out in 2001, and this is the debut. And if you want to hear like the more pure electronic avant garde, like very, I would, I mean, he probably hates you saying this, but this is definitely very industrial stuff. Um, check this out. Tracks like Hella Cobra, um, the second track, Ice on the Equator, um, The Cringe Factory, too, is really just like these like long, droney, deep, um, chilling tracks. This whole album is very like chilling and just really good. Good electronic stuff, good sound. Definitely check out the track Hella Cobra. Um, it's kind of a long album, too. There's a lot of tracks, but definitely listen to the whole thing. It'll put you in a certain mood. Probably mood to read about. I don't know, unsolved mysteries or watch thrillers. It's good. And I kind of like the whole packaging. Its suggestion is all like medication. Um, Manorexia is great. Very, like, it's stuff, it's stuff when you hear this, like, you just realize how talented he really is in like any field of music. Um, yeah, this is like an 8 out of 10. Funny thing, too, um, when I first started getting into Fetus, and I, I had known about that album, Manorexia, and I had never known that was him. I thought this was just some really random but excellent electronic stuff. And I was like, oh, oh, of course it's him. <laughs> this is Steroid Maximus Gadawandalan. Let me see if that's it. It's Gone to Wandalan. I always, I pronounce a lot of stuff wrong. You know that. <laughs> this came out in 92. Um... This one has definitely been quoted as being a, a soundtrack for a film that doesn't exist, but, <coughs> excuse me, but it is amazing, it's great, this is my favorite Steroid Maximus album, um, this is a 9 out of 10, um, I really like their version of Columba on here, there's a few, I think, tracks from Columba on here, but they're like, redone a little bit, um, first movement, third of it, I will love you always. Yeah, check out this track. Um, I will love you always. Love you always. Um, Radio Rahim. Radio Rahim is one of the best tracks on here too. Check out that one. Radio Rahim. And the Bowel of Beelzebub. Um, yeah, just listen to this whole thing. Check out this whole goddamn album. 9 out of 10. Favorite Steroid Maxis album. I just, I can't believe some of the stuff he puts out. This is definitely what you just put on the background. It's great. People are like, what is that? Oh, well, Stereo Maximus. Really good. <laughs> oh, that one fell. All right. Manorexia. The Radiolarian Ooze, I believe. Is that the right? Yeah, the Radiolarian Ooze. 2002. Um... Uh, some of the tracks on here are very industrial, and I think this is the album where he's like, he wrote disclaimers because you might think your um, CD sounds messed up on some parts, but it's not. It's intentional, of course. Um, this is a track like Confessions of Zolf Van de Stippy. Um, Fluorescent Radiation is one of my favorite tracks on here. Like, it sounds like it could come from a really horrifying horror movie. Very good. Um, yeah, um, that's right. Edison Medicine is one of the tracks that sounds like kind of messed up and glitchy, like your CD is skipping, but it's not. It's part of the track, and it's really good. Yeah, check out, I would say check out the track Edison Medicine and Fluorescent Radiation. Um, you can't go wrong. This is another really good Menorexia album. This one's definitely like an 8.5 out of 10. Let's see. This is Fetus's Limb. Um, I can't remember when this came out. This is a compilation album with a lot of tracks on it. And I kind of just wanted to show it because it was nice packaging. It's been a while since I've listened to this particular compilation, but I know it's good. So I won't give it a rating, but this one comes with the Fetus documentary and like videos of live tours. And it's like textured. It feels kind of cool. Here's the CD. It's very nice. And like I said, he does all this artwork and packaging himself. This is a little art book of his stuff. Uh, I think you'll notice without me showing you all these albums, certain colors and patterns he likes. <laughs> um, 
yeah, I remember this just being a really good compilation, so check it out, Lim. And like I said, you get like the little art book, um, you get the CD, you get the documentary, you get a little, whoop, a little slippy case, little, little. This is off his label, Ectopic Ents. I think I said ants earlier, and I'm being silly. Uh, this is Fetus's Null. We talked about that earlier with the Null Void. Um, double this thing um this one's good for all the verklempt remixes but it's definitely like a six out of ten but listen you gotta listen to void though this stuff two left all right don't don't think i forgot his latest main full-length album uh this is fetus's soak i'm actually holding up a sticker that came with it that he signed but i don't know about that signature is that like a j Gina T, maybe? I don't know. I don't know about that signature. But yeah, this is a satellite album to uh, hide. I don't know why I could think of it. <laughs> um, as, as I said earlier, I'm not really a fan of Hyde, but I do like the versions of the songs on here. I think this is a bit better than Hyde, and I think, like, if you want to check out that album, Soak is just really the way to go. Um, I like the opening track, red and black and gray and white, um, there's just certain, he definitely goes, like, different with this one. He just tries doing all kinds of experimental stuff, his own take on his own work, um, it's good. This is, like, a 7 out of 10. Um, I would definitely suggest it. I mean, I would suggest all, I mean, most of these, if not all these, I would suggest, you gotta check it out. Um, check out the track. He also does, um, a, I forgot, he does a cover of The Normals' Warm Loverette, which people seem to be a torn on it. I like it. I think it's good. Um, Spat is really good. His version of Cosmetics, I think, is better than the one on Hyde. But yeah, Vita Soak. This was 2013, I believe, so it's new-ish. Or I still think 2013 is being, you know, new, but it was a while ago now. It's kind of scary. <clears throat> Last is his super big compilation, uh, Fetus Inc. with the little octopus. Fetus Inc. Sync. It's called Sync. I think it says right there. Uh, I think this has some B sides or rarities too on it. Again, this will be awesome since I listen to this one, but this one's good. Check it out. Lots of obscure fetus tracks. Um, I don't have an arbitrary number for this. Just listen to it. And yeah, kind of burnt down to the end. That's my um interesting hot takes on fetus. I think if I had my top five, it's definitely um death, gash, love, um, nail, and hole. Hole is so fantastic. I wish I had vinyl, but I have nail, which is really great in vinyl. Um just check out his stuff. Of course, like I said, he does Venture Brothers and Archer soundtrack. Check out that stuff. It's great. Um, like I said, he's been in a few pornographic films. He's part of the No Wave scene. Worked with Richard Kern. He does a lot of the music, too, for all, like, the hardcore collection I was talking about. And just really cool stuff. I don't think he's released that on CD or anything. And I wish he would. So it's all really good. But, yeah. Thank you for watching this uh, long little bad video on the 1st of September. I appreciate it. And yeah, um, listen to JG Thurlow. <laughs> and remember, like he says, a woman's place is on his face. <laughs>